Hi all. Uh, this very active 40 year old lady presented to the clinic with Hallux rigidus or osteoarthrosis of the first metatarsophalangeal joint. Approximately 10 years ago, uh, she dropped a heavy object onto the joint uh, with increased pain um, over this period of time. Uh, clinically, there was no dorsiflexion, but plantar flexion uh, range of motion was uh, quite normal. So how does dropping a heavy object onto the big toe end up leading to hallux rigidus? The theory is that a subchondral defect develops or cartilage damage due to the trauma on the surface of the first metatarsal head. Uh, you can see in this intraoperative image um, of this patient, it shows significant uh, full thickness cartilage loss. Incidentally, this coincides to where the dorsal aspect of the proximal phalanx articulates with uh, the med head. So 10 years ago, at the time of dropping the heavy object, the defect wouldn't have been this big. Um, you may have seen a small crack in the cartilage surface. Uh, but as we know, subchondral defects can progress and um, over time lead to degenerative joint disease. So as a response, over a long period of time, the body will attempt to limit motion of that joint by laying down more bone dorsally. In an attempt to splint itself uh, by restricting range of motion. Let's go through uh, some other changes, particularly in the sagittal plane. When reading about hallux rigidus, you're going to come across um, two pathologies, metatarsus primus elevatus and hallux equinus. The literature will discuss, does metatarsus primus elevatus cause hallux rigidus or does the pain associated with hallux rigidus cause the metatarsus primus elevatus to form. Metatarsus primus elevatus is a radiographic finding on the lateral view, uh, but you can also assess it clinically. The first metatarsal in relation to the lesser metatarsals is elevated. You can assess this by drawing a line on the lateral radiograph along the dorsal shaft of the first metatarsal and the dorsal shaft of the second metatarsal and assess the, uh, the angle that's formed. A podiatry colleague of ours in the United States, uh, Dr. Rukas, in his study found that elevation of the first metatarsal by four millimeters would decrease dorsal range of motion of the first metatarsophalangeal joint by almost 20%. Uh, on a side note, uh, a long first metatarsal has also been associated with hallux rigidus. Uh, as you can see on this uh, DP view, uh, that the first metatarsal is slightly shorter than the second and doesn't appear to be a factor uh, in this patient. So the other finding is hallux equinus or hallux plantar flexion and hallux interphalangeal joint hyperextension. You can um, assess metatarsus primus elevatus clinically uh, by getting the patient to weight bear and by sticking your finger underneath the first med head. When the deformity is rigid like in this case, you can easily elevate the first med head because it's not really taking any load at all. You can also um, assess interphalangeal joint hyperextension at uh, this point. And then if you come around and look at the foot um, front on, you can assess the level of the first metatarsal head uh, in relationship to the lesser metatarsal heads. The literature also talks about soft tissue contracture with hallux rigidus, in particular flexor hallucis longus and also the plantar fascia. So let's try to answer the question, does metatarsus primus elevatus cause hallux rigidus or does the pain associated with hallux rigidus lead to metatarsus primus elevatus? In this particular case, the other foot foot is completely normal. And it makes more sense to me that the pain associated with the defect caused by dropping the heavy object onto the toe 10 years ago led to slow dorsal bone formation. If the joint is starting to jam up because of this dorsal bone formation, during this time there's pain in the joint. The soft tissue around it is likely going to spasm or go into contracture. As we mentioned, the two primary ones would be 
flexor hallucis longus, and the plantar fascia. Contracture of FHL and the plantar fascia can then lead to metatarsus primus elevatus and hallux equinus to occur. Over time, they all gradually get worse and can transition from a flexible or reducible deformity to a fixed rigid one. So we've come to the end of this video. Uh, in part two, I'll go through the operative procedure that we performed. Thanks for watching.